for Stevie Messi at 5-9 to match up with as a block. So strategically, a very good idea for Penn State to try to attack these smaller Washington players. Alicia Deason with the kill for Washington. Well, how big is it for Washington to get out of that rotation with one ball? Because remember, when Nicole Fawcett was serving last time, that's when Penn State got on their roll. She served a number of times, so Washington was able to get out of that with only one serve by Fawcett. So you got to give them a little bit of an advantage. Here's Hodge attacking into that double block. That was decent, and on her side, the 5'8 setter, Courtney Thompson. We got the net cam going, and you can see Hodge. Look how high she's swinging and decent, not sealing that net, backing off a little bit and giving them just enough space for Hodge to get that ball to go through there. Oh, Heather Pickett is not going to make a lot of friends here. The line judge in that corner initially raised her flag and then on internal replay saw that it hit the line and called it in for a Penn State point. Tough serve at Morrison. She'll get the swing into a triple block. And a net violation is called on Penn State on Hodge. And Hodge reacted very, very violently to that call. Was like, what are you talking about? So she obviously doesn't feel like she got that net on, on the call. It was a little bit of a late call. So not sure when it happened. But our R2 is right there. And that's his job is to watch the net. Bob Oshita with the whistle. That gave a point to Washington. And the Huskies give it right back and give away the lead 18-17 on the service air. Into the Penn State lineup, Kate Price, a junior from Fraser, Michigan. She's become a real versatile player, a utility player, if you will, for Penn State. She can play the back row, she serves well, and is also a solid player in the front row. And there's a ball handling error on the whole house after a poor pass. Well, and Kate Price is one of those players who's doing what she needs to do for her team to be successful. She was a terrific outside hitter. You know, she was freshman, a Big Ten freshman of the year a couple of years ago and was a key outside hitter. But with the addition of Megan Hodge to this lineup, she really wasn't going to get that kind of look on the outside. So she knows that her job is to pass it up so that Hodge and Fawcett and the rest of the team can get all their kills. She's outstanding service player. Pancaked up by Glass. But Armado is unable to keep it alive. That's a point for the Huskies. Washington back out in front. The thing that can be said about this game right now is that these teams are earning their points. Not a lot of giveaways right now. These teams offensively are coming up with big kills or big blocks and making each other score points. Hodge goes off the block, slapped back up in the air by Mia Shiro. Set free by Mussi. Flash goes to Hodge. She goes off the block and gets the kill. Even though you know the ball's going to go to her, she just is so explosive and so dynamic offensively. She's doing a great job of swinging high and hard. Match high, 11 kills for Megan Hodge. And that goes off the left shoulder. And Washington reclaims the lead. Great job by Washington going to Swarbrick again. She goes on the slide out to the antenna. It's able to isolate and get a little bit of a seam in that block for her to swing through. Did we say that this match had all the makings of a classic? What a punch counter punch battle it's been so far. And that attack is sent long by Harmano out of bounds. And Washington gets another point, and the Huskies have their biggest lead of this game, 21-19, after trailing early by seven. Well, and this was just a little bit of a high set. Alicia Glass, I mean, her model gets up, but Glass set it up a little bit high. The timing was off. Her model couldn't control it and hit it deep. And her model is going to need to get the ball in this final run here. Penn State's going to be able to get this win because she's such an incredible attacker, particularly in transition. They're going to need to continue to get her going because you know Fawcett and Hodge are going to get their sets. And Washington, they're going to take their medicine a little bit. But for Penn State to truly be great, Armado needs to be a big part of their offense. Armado serves. Mia Shiro keeping it alive for Washington. Sandell is done. Glass, see if she can settle this Penn State offense down. Fawcett, dug, but out of bounds. Mia Shiro gave it all she had, couldn't keep it in play, and that's a point for Penn State to tie it at 21. And Fawcett's come up with some big kills right now in crunch time against that triple block. He manages to find a little bit of a seam there, and there's not a lot of area for her to hit to have success. So you got to give Fawcett a lot of credit. Sandell awkwardly gets it over the net. Fawcett 
Hammers it right down at Mussey, and she's unable to bring it back up, and Penn State reclaims the lead, 22-21. 13 kills tonight for Nicole Fawcett, her 13th. Helps Penn State get out to a 3-0 run on Washington to get the lead back. Sarbrick with the kill. Again, the credit needs to go to that great, the great pass. Great pass sets up great offense, and libero Tamari Miyashiro just nails that ball. Not an easy ball to pass because it's right up to Courtney Thompson's hands, and she has all of her options available to him. Fawcett is dug by Miyashiro. She's turning into the game two star for Washington. There's a kill into the donut by Morrison. She saw the open area and gives Washington the lead. Penn State here in game number two led early 9-2. The Huskies have battled back. They have the lead, trying to keep the lead. And they got a chance here on a free ball opportunity and a kill for Janine Sandell. Huge play for Washington. Looked like things were going their way. A lot of battles at the net, but beautiful back set by Thompson. And Sandell takes advantage with that hard cross-court kill. Or service receive on the Nittany Lions side, and Fawcett's attack goes wide, and all of the momentum right now belongs to Washington. And the crowd inching a little further forward in their seats, anticipating the Huskies taking a two games to none lead on Penn State. And Russ Rose is sensing the same thing. He's going to use his second timeout. They knew she would be good, but they found out pretty early this season that she would be great. Mia Shiro with a pancake dig on Hodges' attack and a termination on the Washington side for another Husky point. And Washington enjoys its biggest lead of game number two, 26-22. And tomorrow, Mia Shiro just keeping the ball alive for this Husky team. What a great job. Jim, Jim uh, McLaughlin has said about her, maybe pound for pound, the best player I have ever coached, and that says a lot. Hodge with the dig. Here's Fawcett, sending it to the corner, an easy play for Mia Shiro. Sandell with the tip and the kill. Well, twice Sandell has found that spot, that little tip right over that Penn State block. Twice she's got it down for kills and a 6-0 run, making a 7-0 run for the Huskies to now get a nice cushion here at the end of game two. And they can feel it. They can sense it now. They're going to take this 2-0 lead into the break. And yeah, they're running away right now. Seven consecutive points. Fawcett gets a kill. Penn State needed that. But again, we're in rally scoring. So Washington is two away, two serves away potentially from taking a two games to none lead. This is a best of five match. 2-0 can be insurmountable, especially when you're playing in a building like this. Whole house dug it up, but it's Penn State unable to play it out of the net, and now we're at game point. Washington 29-23, and go way back to the beginning of this game. Jim McLaughlin called a timeout when his team fell behind 5-1, and you thought at that moment maybe he's reaching a little bit too early for the panic button. And now he's uh, sitting pretty right now with a six-point lead. There's a kill by Melissa Walgrave. That keeps game two alive for the time being for Penn State. Great set by Alicia Glass to keep that ball alive, but might be a little bit too little, a little bit too late. But Nicole Fawcett's at the service line. She served them into that big lead. Cannot serve them into the win in game two. That's how this match began. Fawcett with a jump serve into the net. That's how game two comes to an end. For the Huskies are a game away from moving on to play in the national semifinals in Omaha. And game three begins the same way game number one began and the way game number two ended with Nicole Fawcett attacking on the jump serve right into the net. And that's something that, you know, it's got to be so disappointing for her because when she gets it going, we saw in game two, what an effective weapon it can be for this Penn State team. But when she misses, obviously, they don't get an opportunity to take advantage of that. Tough pass for Glass to handle, yet she's able to somehow get a set in the air and get a kill out of uh, Melissa Walbridge, who hammers it home to tie it up at a one. And a great pass equals great offense for Penn State. And again, if they can get the ball to Walbridge and her motto in the middle, it's going to make life a lot easier for Fawcett and Hodge on the outside. And that attack is long by Crystal Morrison, just inches long, and Penn State jumps out two to one. Roberta Holthouse will serve. Making her first appearance in this match, Chris Brown. She'll handle 
defensive specialist duties right now for Penn State. She wears number five. That's Holhouse keeping it alive. Amato tried to punch it into the block. And that's Hodge being turned away by Courtney Thompson. And how as excited as Courtney Thompson about getting a block against Megan Hodge. You can see her reaction after she gets this block, gets those hands up there. Look, oh, we just missed it. But turns in celebratory fashion, knowing that the 5'8", for a day, got the 6'4 outside here. Jessica Swarbrick was also up on that block. Armando, great dig by Thompson. We saw a block, we see her dig, and Morrison mishandles that pass. And can't get it over the net, a point for Penn State. Talk about how what a great player Courtney Thompson is selling out there, one arm, putting it up right to the middle of the court.